Hey, hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and I am super excited about today's episode because I love giving bundle ideas. I love bundles. Of course, you all know I'm the wholesale bundle queen. I love doing wholesale bundles. I even love doing some retail arbitrage bundles for those of you guys that aren't quite to wholesale yet, but we're going to talk about all of those specifically this week, back to school bundles. But before we get to that, I want to talk about bundles again. Of course, I want to let you know that there are just a few days left to get in on the bundled ideas revealed special training course that I'm doing live this week. So you want to make sure that you get in on that. This specific bundle ideas training comes from our Ask Me Anything Student Appreciation Week. And I wanted to let you guys know that if you missed that, you're going to want to tune in to that coming up soon on YouTube. You want to make sure that you, the Ask Me Anything, absolutely amazing amazing so many questions so much fun you're gonna learn a ton just by watching that video but what we talked about there is that I offered this special training. So many people have so many questions about bundles. They have questions and overthink the process, right? Like, oh, I don't know which components to put together with what. And I just, I just need more visual um, ideas and more ideas of, of bundles. So I love bundle ideas. And so I decided I'm going to do this bundle ideas revealed little mini training course for, so that you guys can see specific bundles just from retail, from catalogs, from websites, different places where you can start seeing bundle ideas everywhere and not overthink the process but really just simplify it and realize what your customers need so to get in on that you just have a couple of days so you need to take action right now mommyincome.com slash bundle ideas come to the course learn some things you're gonna be super you're gonna walk away super excited I know I'm already excited about it so I can't wait to reveal even more bundles in that but this week's episode is all about back to school it's about back to school and I've gotten a lot a lot of questions about um, this year and because of the pandemic and is there going to be a back to school and what am I going to do about back to school? So I want to definitely talk to you guys about back to school because honestly, let me just be real. With the pandemic, there's been a lot of virtual learning. But just the other day, I read a New York Times article that did a survey among tons of schools, specifically in low-income areas of places where people are working for a living and they, they have everybody's working for a living, right? But they have, you know, the struggle is real when it comes to virtual and online school or, or things like that. So um, I'm very hopeful that in the fall that schools are going to return back to normal. It, it, there's some sort of normalcy, like children actually going to physical buildings and doing learning at school, just like it used to be. So are there going to be some virtual programs? Probably. Are some colleges going to do some virtual options? That's a lot easier for college kids to be able to do virtual learning. So we'll talk about that. But honestly, I'm going to talk about regular back to school because a lot of the country, as the pandemic is starting to wane, um, and there are some fears about a second wave, we're not going to get into politics, we're not going to get into the, the, my thoughts on the pandemic. But the reality is, as sellers, as product providers, we want to be thinking about these things because they're really important. They're, it's important to think about all these things because it affects your bottom line. How much do you invest? How much don't you invest? What are, how can we be cautious about putting our best foot forward? So we'll talk about those strategies. And I really do think that there's going to be a back to school. Although I have lived in a highly affected area in the Southeast Detroit area um, with the pandemic. And there's been a lot of other major cities involved in the pandemic being hard hitting. There are tons of places that have haven't been hard hit like at all, like haven't seen any cases or have seen just a, a tiny handful of cases. So they have no reason to shut down their entire school systems because of one or two cases over the course of the entire pandemic. So there will be people going back to school and buying school supplies and buying all the things. And so I'm here to give you all the back to school bundle ideas that I can possibly think of. I wish I could show you pictures of all these things. Of course, on a podcast, you can't see pictures if you guys are watching on YouTube. You know, I could, but there's just so many different um, ideas that aren't even available on Amazon. So I can't even show you what I think is a great bundle because it doesn't exist yet that's where you come in. That's where you're going to create this bundle that we're talking about here because no one else is doing it. I'm not seeing some of these bundles that I'm going to talk about here. This is something I would appreciate to buy as a parent going back to school. I don't want to go to Staples and add a bunch of stuff and, and figure this stuff out. Some people love, I mean, I do like, I seriously, this is my confession. I love office supplies. Like 
if I'm ever tempted to just buy random things at places, it's going to be like pens, pencils, uh, markers, stationery, sticky notes. I mean, give me all the sticky notes, calendars, planners, notebooks, especially if it's pretty and it appeals to like visually. I just love the color of it or something like that. I literally have too many notebooks. I literally, I could, I mean, let's just, let's just show you for fun. How many I actually have? These are like notebooks that I have. Well, like, look at how many of them are. I'm a sucker for um, back to school because I love stationery and office supplies and all the things. And so if y'all ever want to send me something, send me notebooks and pens and pretty sticky notes and I will be so happy. Anyway, so we're going to talk about the differences, college, high school, elementary, all the different things, and we will cover virtual learning. But I wanted to just ease your mind a little bit about the whole pandemic and the idea there that what do we do as sellers that we want to cash in on back to school, but we don't want to lose a bunch of money, right? So what do we do? You go wide, not deep. So when I say that, I mean, if you're going to do some back to school bundles, don't buy 500 of one specific bundle and hope that bundle will sell. Instead, put your head together to create maybe three to five bundles in a couple different categories. That way, if one doesn't do as well as you hoped, you're not betting the whole farm on one thing, right? All eggs in one basket, diversify, all those kind of things. So we're going to talk about those specific things. Now, let's talk first about when back to school starts. When do people start shopping? Right after 4th of July. So a lot of people, it's like 4th of July, you have all this, you know, you see it in stores. Follow the store patterns. Go to stores. If you're a homebody and you don't want to go to stores, once every now and then, once right before season starts, go to a store and look at their displays. Look at the things that they have going on so that you can see what they're merchandising. Merchandising has been around as long as stores have been around. These people know what they're doing. The marketing experts know what they're doing to position things for you to buy them. So go through and go in there and look at what they've put together. So it starts at the beginning, like right after 4th of July, I would say mid-July, and tapers off like the, the second week of September. Some people still buy things into September, um, but oftentimes it, those are the times where it comes up. The other time is it usually has what I consider a second wave of different things, like in um, January. So a lot of colleges will go back in January or there'll be second semesters. People might be out of supplies. So don't think for a second that back to school and school supply bundles only have this short season and then it's out. People buy a lot of these different things year round, especially things we're going to talk about because some of them are so non-traditional. You guys, this goes beyond pencil boxes and pencil cases and crayons, although those are great things. You want to think about that. So also think about less is more. You want to have this stuff on the shelf. Oh, let's go back to dates for a second. Mid-July. So if you want to have your stuff ready for this back to school sessions and going on, you want to start working on this ASAP. Get your bundles together, purchase your supplies, and get them on the shelf soon enough. Now, if you don't have them on the shelf by the second week of July, it's okay. August is the biggest back to school month because everyone's actually going back usually by then and people want to be prepared. And of course, there's last minute Lucy's like me, where literally will not be purchasing like school supplies until like two days before when Amazon can get it to my door and kid goes off to school and all good. So don't panic that it's, you know, you've missed the boat because you clearly have not. You just have enough, you have enough time now to start implementing some of these things as soon as possible. Also, when it comes to bundles, Oh, I can't say this enough. Sometimes less is more. Now, I know that there's tons and tons of school supplies out there and different bundles that you can put together and you want to create all the things. The reality with all the things is that it can get complicated. It can get really complicated because then you've got to find the equal number of them, especially if you're doing some retail bundles. You've got to find all the things and, and they all have to be perfect. And they all have to match exactly, right? So less is more. I would say four to five is about the maximum you want to put into a bundle. Now, your results may vary as far as what type of bundle that you're putting together, but I would suggest four to five at the maximum. It just gives you less of a headache. You can, you can spell each one out in your bullet points without going over and having to say, and this, and this, and this. I mean, using those bullet points to your advantage when you're creating your listing is really important. Making sure that you, you know, four to five items maximum. I, I like, that's my sweet spot. Some people go way over that. Some people only put two items together. That's perfectly acceptable. A bundle is two or more. So there you go. 
don't make too many bundles either. Like I said, pick one or two in a different categories, maybe three to five bundles. Don't go extra deep in all of them. Of course, you're always going to have the one bundle that does so well that you're going to go, dang, I wish I would have invested more in that. But then you learn for next year. All right. Let's dive in. Oh, I forgot to invite you to the Facebook group. Come to the Facebook group, y'all. If you're not in there already, come to the Facebook group, mommyincome.com slash join us, keyword, code word, school, hashtag school. We're going back to school. I hope we're going back to school. School, that's your, that's your hashtag to get into the Facebook group, mommyincome.com slash join us. Code word is school. So you want to get in there and do that. Don't say I never give you a code word. Lots of people come in like, I didn't get a code word. It's because you didn't listen to an episode. It's because you didn't watch a YouTube video. There's always a code word. Okay. I'm going to get virtual learning out of the way right away. So if you guys are thinking that people are going to continue virtual learning and it's going to be online, that, that whole thing, you want to make sure that you are ready for that. So what are people using for virtual learning? Um, headphones extra headphones, like a multi-pack, unless you have like super, super expensive ones and you're, you know, you have little kids. I literally buy these like three for $5 at like Menards or something like that, like cheap ones. Why? Because my daughter uses them and then like the cat chews on them or they get stuck in the car door or I don't know, but they just are always getting broke. And I'm so afraid to spend too much money on really good headphones because I'm sure she'll break those too somehow. So for the little ones, headphones. For for the older ones, maybe, um, you know, the over the ear ones, you know, I'm not talking about like beats. I'm talking about, um, those just, you know, inexpensive ones, but ones that people can use. Webcams, laptop desks, a whole little laptop desk. A lot of people, you know, sit in their beds or they, you know, sit on the couch and they're doing their schoolwork or whatever else. And they want one of those comfy laptop beds, surge protectors, um, external hard drives, mouse pads, ugh, notebooks, of course, and pencils and pens and all of these things are still relevant. My daughter has been doing virtual school before virtual school was a thing. You know, she's been, she's been a virtual student for like all of last year. And she still has a backpack, her laptop, her mouse pad. She uses headphones when she watches her online, um, you know, webinars with her teachers and things. She does Zoom calls. So she, you know, she doesn't have an extra camera, um, but she still uses all these things. She still has to take actual notes, written notes or, you know, typed notes and send them to her teachers. So she's still using regular old school supplies with, you know, pens, pencils. She has a pencil bag, you know, things like that. So she still has to do those things. She's still using regular old supplies as well. So thinking about those things for virtual learnings, don't forget that if someone's virtually learning, they still need their own little space. So thinking about um, chairs or chair pads or, um, you know, something that makes their space their own and also something that can maybe fit in a backpack. A lot of them, you know, maybe go to Starbucks at some point and do their work there or whatever, older students, uh, college students. And so putting those things together that they can be mobile. There's uh, wireless mini mouses that you can use, um, all kinds of different things. So thinking about those virtual learning type things, people still need those school supplies at home. All right, next category is clothing. A lot of people don't necessarily think about clothing when it's back to school, but there are a ton of schools that require uniforms, especially for elementary kids, not even private schools, public schools, charter schools. I know around here there are many, many um, school districts that require basic uniforms. So you're talking about your Oxford shirts, your shirts that, you know, your Collared shirt, short sleeve, you know, different colors. I've seen them in red, white, light blue. Um, they also require like the polo type shirts. And um, they also require things like the jumpers or skirts or khaki pants, either khaki or navy blue. These are the most common colors. And I remember when my sister's kids were going to school, they all required uniforms. She had three boys and a girl. And I'm telling you, these boys are just boys, right? I love boys. I love little boys. My little sister just had a little boy. I'm so excited. It's the first boy in the family in like 17 years. And my little boy was so wild and rambunctious, but he was just the cutest. I just, I love a little special place in my heart for little boys, but they are messy and they are loud and they cannot keep their clothes like clean or um, uh, stain free or holes. I mean, they just usually don't. And so 
what she always needed was like a ton of these, you know, polo shirts that she had to buy for her kids for school and the pants because khaki pants, let's face it, they're not like jeans. They wear out their thin material. They get holes in the knees faster than you can imagine. And so they need multiples. So, so she's like, I wish I could go in and just buy 25 of the same shirt at a really reasonable price and just have extras because these boys are constantly ruining their clothes. No matter how much I stain stick, no matter how much I reinforce something like the knees get ripped and you know, boys are just hard on their clothes. Girls are too. My girl, she's, you know, she's always been hard on her clothes as well. So the reality here is that the clothes the that you could buy them and put them together in a bundle in a five pack so they have five days of school right you could do three of one color two of another you could do all of the colors you could do shirts i don't necessarily recommend doing shirts and pants together because oftentimes if you have kids you know that their sizes aren't always the same you know my daughter might wear you know i did i wear a different size shirt than i do pants you know same thing with kids so maybe putting a five pack of the same pair of pants together all the same size that would be amazing or um the shirts maybe it's two 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 and two two of each color or something like that or two of one color five of another color anyway the bundle here exists five of the same exact shirt, you know they have five days of school, you could even go with a 10 pack, honestly, because then maybe someone doesn't have to do laundry for two weeks. I don't know. The idea here is putting together these sets so that you uniform kit, a five pack in bulk, use words like um, bulk, multi-pack, whatever that is. So thinking about those type of bundles, people go to school. Same thing with non-uniform items. I mean, my, I've said this before on other episodes. Putting a bundle together of clothing for like elementary kids or even littler kids and putting different outfits together and just calling it a day, especially if they're like under the age five, usually the sizes are pretty standard, four, three, two, you know, whatever. Um, and so that gets a little bit easier because most of the time, littler kids, toddlers are the same size on top and bottom. It's when they get older that it's a little bit different. Um, so yeah, if you've got a 4T and you can put outfits together for 4T and it's just like, here's five outfits for the whole week. Here's your back to school kind of idea, mix and match. If that's your thing, put the clothing together. Why not? How about socks? And underwear, right? For little kids, I'm talking about, you know, age 10 and under, you know, you're getting your little underoos. Like these aren't really complicated. They're pretty standard. You know, you buy a six pack of socks and a six pack of underwear, whatever it else for a specific age group and gender, whatever else you want to do there. Perfectly put together. Socks and underwear. I mean, it's part of what you do when you go back to school. I don't know about you, but my kid grows so quickly. It's really hard to constantly keep her clothed. So that would be amazing for people like me. I can just add it to the cart, socks and underwear, bam, done. So thinking about everyone's usually buying back to school clothes and all those things. So don't skip out on this particular category. It's not a lot of what people think about when it comes to back to school. All right, let's talk about college. There are so, we could do, I could do a whole episode of college back to school bundles. There are so many opportunities here. What do you know from college? There's three types of college students, right? There's the one that stays at home with parents, but still goes to college. There's the one that stays in dorms going to college. And then there's ones that rent either houses or apartments or something like that, but they're off to school. So anything for a dorm room, most of the time, it's not a college student moving in by themselves. They're going to have roommates, so they're going to really have their own dedicated space, not a ton of space, right? Thinking tiny house, thinking small, thinking you're living in either a dorm room or just a bedroom, and what do you need for those things? So things like their own towels, their own sheets, um, posters, and things like that for the wall. I mean, dorm rooms are very boring, and so you want to think about what are they going to put on the wall, and what would they need on the wall? Sticky tack, thumb tacks, maybe little hanging shelves because um, space savers, hello, like things like at Ikea, right? Yes, you can bundle things from Ikea. Did you know this? Have you tried this? Look on Amazon, you'll find a lot of Ikea bundles. They're brilliant because they're inexpensive and they're just a way to, you know, they're inexpensive bundle wise to put together. They're all about space. I would love, you know, Ikea bundles are the bomb. Um, storage bins. Things like anything for storage, anything that can reduce storage. Here's an idea. Go to Pinterest 
and go to storage ideas, go to um, organization, home organization. It's like literally I have like a million pins on Pinterest in the organization department. I love organizers. You know what my favorite one is from the dollar store is those over the door um, shoe holders, shoe rack holders that are transparent. So you can see through them. They're not like fancy smanchy. You can see what they're in. In my office closet, I have one over the door and it's behind the door. And that's where I keep cords and batteries and plugs and headphones and like everything that's always getting jumbled off they each have their own little pocket and the pockets are labeled so you know this is an android cord this is an iphone cord this is these are the blocks these are you know all the different electronic cord things but you can use that for anything you can store toiletries in them you can store um, shampoo conditioner cleaning products snacks i've seen people put these on the back of their pantry door to where they put like granola bars and cheez it's and like all the different snacks and I mean, these things are the greatest for storage. So, you know, college dorm storage bundle, and then you've got two or three different things. They fit nice neatly in a box. Mom can buy that on, on Amazon and send it to whoever, or they can buy it themselves. It's awesome. Okay. So storage, storage items, snack packs, like college survival snack packs. Think microwave type meals. So, you know, like ramen noodles and microwavable macaroni and cheese, things that aren't perishable, but that you could like store in a little storage bin. How about making, you know, creating the box that fits these things in it so that they can actually keep it in the storage box. So like anything that can, you know, do it yourself, make it simple because college kids are all about simple, fast, easy. They don't usually have access to a lot of ways to cook big meals, unless of course they're in an apartment, things like that, but you know, on a budget, on a dime. So you can um, snack packs, convenience packs. Um, how about biking? A lot of college kids that move to college campuses, they, they ride bikes instead of having cars or whatever else. They ride bikes to their on-campus classes all over. So bike tires, bike accessories, helmets, um, things that, you know, baskets even, you know, that's more and more common around here seeing people go to the store and using um, their bikes with baskets and things. So thinking about biking accessories, it's a very big deal. A lot of people buy, um, a, there's a surge in bike sales around a college time because people aren't taking their cars. So thinking about that, backpacks and laptop bags, huge. You can make a combination of a backpack or a laptop bag along with, um, a mouse or a mouse pad or you know anything that you can you know mobile storage also cord keepers if you don't go wireless their cord keepers are a big deal also surge protectors um, or six ways or whatever you guys want to call them I mean they're called different things in different places but um, we even travel with a six way why because everyone has a cord and everyone has an extension cords um, and everyone has cords to plug in devices, whether they're tablets, laptops, phones, whatever, everyone's got a cord for everything. If you've got four people in your family, you've got four cords, four chargers, four blocks, four whatever, uh, surge protectors and, and um, extension cords. That's what I was thinking. So thinking about those types of things and cord keepers and ways to organize those things, because when you're in a small space, organization's everything. Um, also planners, stationaries, things like that. Like there are still, I know all of my digital friends are probably laughing because they're like, ha ha, you still pay for a planner and I do everything on Google. Great. But I still like to write stuff down. I still like to have a planner. I still like to write things in notebooks, things like that. So a lot of um, calendars go from July to July as like a school year calendar. So a lot of planners follow that same path because people start and, and plan all these things. So planners, stationary kits, things like that. I mean, these sell kits are put together, put your own together, put different things from different places together. Um, you know, a lot of people like to have their stuff match. They like to have everything looking the same. They know it's theirs, especially if you're going to be sharing a dorm room. Um, so thinking about that, linens, uh, bedding sets. Bedding sets are a big deal for um, college kids because a lot of times they're going into their own, right? Like, I don't know about you, but my kids here have like double or queen beds that they sleep in at home. But if they were moving into college, you get a twin size bed if you're in a dorm. Like you don't really have room for a double bed. So thinking about those things, small furniture items, small appliance items. You know, you're back to school. A lot of kids have mini fridges, but not just the mini fridge. Go beyond the mini fridge. Like use mini fridge as part of your keyword, but then like mini fridge storage, like little small Tupperware containers to store small type things in there. Also 
I've seen a lot of these bundles on Amazon, which I think they're brilliant and I love them. It's like ketchup, mustard, and mayonnaise, like packets, packets that you would maybe get from, um, you know, the store, like, you know, you go get ketchup packets when you go to get McDonald's fries or something. Um, and I see people selling these in, in smaller kits on Amazon, brilliant bundle. Why? Because so many people can use that bundle, but I'm thinking college right now. Like you don't have full size ketchup bottles in like a mini fridge. I mean, you've got this small little mini fridge. So instead you can have a little container of packets that they can keep on top of the mini fridge. So they have their condiments at any time and they don't have this big bulky thing that they have to put in their mini fridge because uh, space is really important. So thinking about stuff like that, anything small, mini, but that would really help. Um, someone who has limited amount of space and money even. So thinking about those types of things surrounding the food, toiletries, same idea, toiletry carrying cases. I mean, if you've ever been in a dorm, you know, the bathroom's not in there most of the time. You got to walk to the community bathroom. You've got to have your stuff, which robes, slippers, things like that. Things that like your kids might not have worn in your own house, perhaps because they have their own bathroom or they, you know, something like that they're gonna have to adjust. And what are these things? These are the things that they're probably gonna need that they don't realize they need. So there's an abundance of bundles for college and college dorms and um, going back, even if it's an apartment type thing, you know, it's like moving into a new place and what are you gonna need on a smaller scale? Look at the college prep sections for like major retailers, like Bed Bath & Beyond, Staples, Office Max, even um, your local Walmart will probably have displays of his back to school um, displays and putting merchandising things together. Get your ideas from there. Get your products from there. Anything like that would be really, really helpful to do. Okay, let's move on to high school. High school is still, a, there's a lot of different bundles, ones that we haven't even talked about yet. Locker accessories. Locker accessories are a big deal. A lot of people in high school like to have their lockers decorated, organized. There's shelves, there's mirrors, there's, um, you know, the little magnetic. I love those actually. I buy, usually buy one every back to school. They're, they're super strong magnetic um, mesh holders. I don't love that they're made out of mesh, but they're making prettier ones now. Um, and I use them to store pencils and pens and different things in like office supplies. And I have either on my whiteboard, which is magnetic, or other places. I love those. Um, so locker supplies. Look for high school, even if you don't have kids that go to high school, look for the high school school supply list. Things like graphing calculators, a lot of them use headphones, backpacks, strong heavy duty backpacks. You know, there's backpacks for elementary kids and there's cheap Walmart ones, which are fine. You know, they have characters and things on them. But like strong heavy duty backpacks that can fit you know, bigger books, bigger supplies, bigger things. Uh, also, um, this like snack packs and things. I mean, kids are all about drinks these days, right? A drink bottle, a, a water bottles, um, water bottle, backpack set, water bottle, backpack, lunch kit set. Those can go high school and elementary and middle school. Um, but also athletic gear. Lots and lots of people are into high school athletic gear and they have all of their things that they need to be buying for sports or for um, you know, that high school age group is just a really good place to use for bundles. So um, thinking about athletic gear, thinking about clothing even for um, that age group, putting specific leggings together maybe for girls um, that are like maybe three different colors but the same pair of leggings. I mean most people that love something love it and want to buy more of that. So thinking about high school um, sporting events, there's always things coming up like, you know, the different events they have for like homecoming and dances and, um, you know, the, the weeks that they have, you know, rallies and stuff like that. So just less for high school, because I think that a lot of less supplies are used, but still things like the calculators, the headphones, anything laptop related, a lot of them have laptops. Um, tablet accessories, phone accessories, phone accessories, phone accessories, right? These kids need phone cases and new pop sockets and new, you know, they, they look these little stands. I know you guys can't see me on the podcast, but you can see um, it on YouTube. My husband made me this phone stand. Like literally it's very simple. I haven't painted it yet. I'm supposed to paint it, but this sits on my desk 
and so that I can keep my phone right over here and it keeps it upright so that I don't always have to hold it if I want to, you know, if I'm watching something or looking at something or whatever else. So things like that, headphones, the graphing calculators, and look up the school supplies for um, school supply lists. Go to your community schools page and type in school supplies and they will give you a list even if you don't have a kid in the school to be able to do that. Okay, elementary kids. Oh, there's so many supplies for elementary kids. I mean, so many. We get a supply list like two pages long when my daughter goes to school. Clorox wipes, tissues, classroom packs of pretty much anything. Things like um, spoons, forks, silverware, plates, napkins even, like just generic you know, off brand or whatever else, they're always doing projects with these things or sometimes teachers serve snacks, but they, you know, they need things like napkins or little mini Dixie cups and um, folders, folders, folders. There's tons of different kinds of folders that you can do a folder pack. You know, usually we need like at least five folders when we go back to school. Um, how about Ziploc bags? Ziploc baggies, um, reusable bags for the for eco friendly. We're going a lot more eco friendly here, and re anything reusable, water bottles, um, reusable lunch kits, reusable. Uh, even they make reusable sandwich baggies that you can wash out and use over and over again. Um, things to separate lunches. You know, I know, I don't know about you, but sometimes like. My kids are like, I don't want a lunch kit that anything touches. So thinking about those types of things. Um, ice packs, water bottles, thermoses, and then, you know, the food that kind of goes along with that. A lot of people stock more up on things that they can just toss into a lunch box and make it easier. Um, stuff for teachers and teacher classroom decor. Okay, so think bigger, right? Teachers are always redecorating their classrooms. They don't always use the same supplies every year. So what do the teachers need to go back to school? I know recently uh, a teacher friend of mine reached out to me and asked about mini whiteboards that she wanted her kids to be able to have these mini whiteboards. So each one sits at their desk and they each have dry erase markers and whiteboards. And she provides all of that because not every student can find one or buy one on their own on the list. And so she's like, I need 32, you know, mini whiteboards with with whiteboard markers because she wants them to do their math lessons and things like that on there or whatever she teaches and so thinking about the teachers and the classrooms and what they might need for um, you know those types of projects craft kits craft supplies we're talking anything from glue to googly eyes to little pom-poms to markers crayons glitter glue um, all these different things that you can put into kits and, and do the research and look it up and look at different craft kits or craft supplies or school supplies and kind of look at what helium 10 and merchant words brings up as far as these these things go because there's so many it goes beyond okay I need a pencil box with some pencils with some glue with some scissors I mean those are great for elementary kids but like going beyond in, in a different way so maybe a pack of three pack of disinfectant wipes with three boxes of tissue or um, you know your classroom cleaning kit or something like that to where it has all these different things in them that would be super helpful using your keywords like classroom teacher elementary I think I would definitely target elementary kids when it comes to that, the specific grade, like um, school accessories, school back to school, school supplies for third graders, for seventh grade, for 10th grade, for high school, whatever it is, like, like call it out in your, in your specific bundle when you're creating your listing, because there's just so many opportunities. I, I know this seems a little bit overwhelming. There's so many ideas here. Narrow yourself to just a few. Like do maybe one in grocery, one in elementary, one in um, storage for, you know, college age. Because the storage, honestly, doesn't necessarily have to be geared towards college. You could use that as one of your keywords, dorm organization, but it could also be tiny house organization. I mean, some of these bundles cross over into other customers. Remember with your bundles, solve a problem for your customer. Make it easy and convenient for them to solve a problem with your bundle. Is it an organizational bundle? Is it a grocery bundle? Is it, um, you know, someone doesn't want to go out to the store because maybe they, they still don't like the idea that the pandemic is still around and they, they're just done with store shopping. Great. Create them a bundle that's easy for them to find that solves a problem for them. 
And I know we touched on grocery a little bit, but I'm going back to grocery for just a second because this is definitely a time where people start stocking up on like the single pack items. I mean, some people buy that year round all the time and this bundle could appeal to them as well. But, you know, the different, you know, kids snack packs or something where, you know, you've got a mix of mini cookies and mini fruit snacks and, you know, all the different things that they can, you know, purchase and put in um, their lunch kits. So we're talking about like granola bars and anything pre-wrapped individual snacks, anything mini for, for college for, uh, or even for elementary kids, you know, stuff like that. Anything that can fit into a lunchbox, anything that's grab and go. If you have any kids, you know, they literally will grab a granola bar before they ever make a sandwich. They're just like, I'm like, there's tons of food. They're like, we don't have anything. If we're out of like grab and go snacks, my kids think we don't have any food. They're like, oh my gosh, there's nothing to eat. And I'm like, yeah, make a sandwich, make some nachos, make, you know, mac and cheese, make all these. Oh, you mean I have to make something? Oh, then no. They're just like, they, what they mean when they say we don't have anything is we don't have anything to grab and open and shovel in my mouth. <laughs> or we don't have any drinks. Like, hello, drinks are such a big deal for these age groups. They're like, they, they, you know, soda or pop or you know, anything that they can pop a can open and drink is like a big deal in this age group. So maybe variety packs of those things. Do it yourself, snack packs, microwavable meals, K cups, K cups and um, creamers that are, you know, don't have to be refrigerated, things that are like non-perishable like that. And of course, like the toiletries. Remember to shop at the sales. Remember to break up bigger packs. Like I know my, one of my very first bundles was breaking up a larger variety pack from Costco. It was like this granola bars that my kids hated the one flavor. And I'm like, well, what am I going to do with these? We'd hate to throw them away. We can donate them to a food bank. And I was like, well, also I could make a bundle with these. So making a bundle of different flavors and, and variety packs of different food, because guess what? You don't have to use the brand name. You don't have to worry about that. It can just literally be like granola granola on the go, grab and go snack pack. And then it has all these different brands of different things in them that you don't have to name them all. You can just think you put like things like crackers, nuts, keto, whatever, you know, whatever you're focusing on for that bundle, I think would be really helpful. So all this, all these ideas, you should be completely, I don't want to overwhelm you, but you should be overwhelmed with the different ideas and directions that you need to go. Start with one. Start with one and then say, okay, I've created this bundle. This is a great bundle. Here's all my keywords. Go through your wholesale bundles framework so that you know how to vet your ideas and what kind of components you can put together here that make a lot of sense. And just try one back to school bundle. You know, start there. If you're really just overwhelmed and confused, pick one category. The thing you know the most about. If you have elementary kids, start there. If you've got grown up kids, the kids that have grown up and moved out, think about their college days or think about when they moved out or they had college wherever and what did they need and what was a problem solver for those types of things. Remember, remember, remember with bundles, you're trying to solve a problem with your bundle. Now, if you're sitting here thinking my bundle doesn't solve a problem, what granola bars don't solve a problem. They actually do. They, they make it really convenient for parents to give their kid a snack in multiple varieties of flavors. So that actually solves a problem or meets a need. It's a need for me to not have to buy flavors that my kids don't like you know, and have to waste food or, or the organization. It does solve a problem. It gets you a lot of stuff in a small space. So thinking about all these different things, you have an abundance of back to school ideas. Start looking for the wholesalers now. There's tons of ways to find the different wholesalers. If you don't know of wholesalers that sell school supplies or any of the things we talked about, go to mommyincome.com slash 100. That's the number 100. And you will see the trade show stocking video that will help you find school suppliers. All you have to do is put in school supplies or type in one keyword and look at those suppliers and find someone that offers that. You can also just use Google. Um, using Google is hard because a lot of times you might find like the middlemen where they say wholesale, but they're not the actual direct distributor. And so you want to dig deep and make sure that you're getting a good price. If you're getting a good price, who cares if it's a middleman, right? But if you can save more money going direct, why not? So mommyincome.com slash 100 for, to find some more wholesale suppliers. And don't forget about the bundle ideas. So this was all about back to school bundles and you have tons of ideas you could execute right now, but don't forget the special bundle ideas revealed that's coming up. 
mommyincome.com slash bundle ideas. This is going to be a special training where I'm going to talk specifically about bundles, not just back to school bundles, other bundles, bundles you can do year round. We're going to talk about picking components. We're going to talk about bundles that you can probably execute right now, lower costs, lower risk, but stop overthinking bundles and just start executing them. And I think you'll be surprised. So don't forget that. I will see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon bios.